Hey, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Let's make my new favorite chicken sandwich. We're here in the Meat Church outdoor kitchen in the evening, which is probably our favorite shoot. It's not as hot and less flies, so it's gonna be a good time. All right, where'd this recipe come from? My good buddy, Judd McCutcheon. Uh, he works at the bank that I use. He's also a fellow volleyball dad. He called me like a lot of guys do and said, man, I got something that you gotta make a video out of. Think you're gonna love it. So the next day I went and made what I'm about to show you and he's right, it is super delicious. And I ultimately turned this chicken into kind of a spicy chicken sandwich, but what I'm gonna show you could be used for tacos, quesadillas, or just eat the chicken as it is, but it is super freaking delicious. Now my longtime favorite sandwich is our Nashville hot chicken sandwich. That's gonna be tough to beat, but this is really, really good. And when someone on my crew has this, when I make it and they immediately go make it, you know it was really good. So let's jump into it. Very cheap. This whole meal is gonna be 12 bucks and it's gonna feed eight people. So I bought a package of chicken thighs and you could do this with you know any kind of meat that you want. Uh, Mrs. Meat Church, she likes uh, white meat, so she likes the breast meat, and uh, I always say that she's right about everything uh, except this. If you know, you know, the flavor comes from thighs. They're juicier, they're harder to dry out, and what I've done with all these is I've kind of trimmed the fat off. Thought I would show you this on one of them. And if you're a competition guy, then you know how to get uh, the fat off of a off chicken. So all I do is use a sharp knife and I just scrape it. Some people like to grab it and kind of pull it off and that's fine too. And you don't even have to do this, but I think there's a little bit too much fat on there for my liking. So I just kind of pull the excess off um, and then I'm just gonna cut it off after I get it nice and pulled over. So what do we do from here? This is, couldn't be any easier. So we're gonna marinate this chicken. And what Judd told me to do was get a can of pickled jalapenos. Uh, they're pickled, so they're not all that hot. You can get this in your grocery store. There's lots of different brands. I got this at my local HEB. It's like $1.50. Yes, I got chicken hands, so that's okay. We're throwing this away. What we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this chicken in this bag, and obviously, like I said, we're gonna marinate it. And I'm gonna throw all the jalapenos in here as well. I'm throwing the entire thing in. So let's kind of mix this up. Put a little of the chicken in, dump a little of this in. A little more chicken, a little more jalapenos. There's carrots in here too. I don't know why, but whatever. And what Judd told me was to marinate this for 24 hours. Now my Nashville hot chicken recipe, I marinated in pure pickle juice for four hours. I've done this exactly like you said, 24 hours and I love it. If uh, you wanna lower the spice level a little, then you can do it for less time. But 24 was great for me. So we're gonna go over here to our vacuum sealer. Made with meat chamber sealer. Uh, you can use obviously Ziploc bags or whatever you want uh, to marinate. But in this particular case, uh, I like a chamber sealer because you can seal um, marinades and brines uh, and have no mess. And it's super duper easy. I love this stuff. You guys know I've been using it for years. So uh, anytime I'm marinating chicken, which honestly is a two, three time a week thing for me, people say, how are you so skinny if you make all that delicious barbecue? Well, we cook a lot of chicken during the week. And so I'm constantly doing a marinade. Woo, Yakitori, sparking on me. So this is all you gotta do. And I kinda like, a, I kinda leave it a loose seal. And why do I do that? Cause I like to move it around if I want. So instead of making y'all wait 24 hours, I've got some that I did yesterday. Here's what it's gonna look like, crazy easy. Let me get another glove. open man that is sharp and we go okay now we need to season these up so I'm gonna get them laid out on the board 
And you know, look ahead, we're actually gonna grill these hot and fast over a hot fire. I'm gonna use my mill scale yakitori, you can use what you want. I've been telling people lately, replicate my, my recipes are just a guide. Make them your own, make any changes you want, and then grill them on whatever you got. In this case, I'm just going on a hot fire. You could do these in a, in a pellet grill. Um, you could do these Kamado grill, whatever the heck you got. Doesn't make any difference. Okay. I decide I'm gonna use our fajita seasoning. Feels like it goes with this recipe. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and a little bit of citrus. And I'm gonna season on both sides. Again, I love thigh meat because you can, you can cook this stuff at a really high, to a really high internal temperature and you're not gonna dry it out. And I just feel like there's so much more flavor in it. Um, but you know, I'm sure you could do this with a lot of things. When, the first time I tried this, I actually did breast meat as well. It was good. Uh, but again, this is my preference. Okay, so season with what you want, but that's what we're doing today. Now, next step, while that kind of soaks in, I've got a stick of butter warming over here on my yakitori. I'm gonna mix in some Cholula hot sauce. So I've got one stick of butter. You don't quite need a whole bottle of this, but I'm gonna put a whole lot of it in there. This couldn't be any easier. I'm gonna throw it on this grill. How hot is it? It's really hot. So I've just got a straight charcoal fire burning in my uh, mill scale yakitori. You guys know I love these. They come in three sizes. So it kind of goes without saying, but again, you can grill this on whatever, as I mentioned. So on with the thighs I go, and my grilling process is very simple. I'm a couple minutes aside, and then I just keep flipping, rotating, trying to cook them as even as I can. Um, obviously you see, you know, there's a thicker part of the thigh in one particular area. And so I'm just gonna keep moving these around nonstop. I like to put the bigger ones in the middle, thicker ones I should say. All right, with this setup, um, if I need this, you know, if I want these to cook hotter, I'll drop the grade. If they're a little too hot, then I'll raise it up. Um, obviously, adjust this to whatever you're cooking on. And I'm gonna drop this other grate down and throw some jalapenos on it because they're gonna be super tasty as well. I'm gonna mix up this butter and the Cholula hot sauce and I'm just gonna baste these thighs uh, while they cook. All right, they've been cooking a couple minutes, so I'm just gonna start flipping. Now that they're flipped, let's keep basting. Build those flavors, Put this hot sauce and butter on here, add some more moisture, not that it needs it, and some flavor. Now that they're basted, I'll drop my grate back down, get it a little closer to the fire, because I like that char. Now we've been, you know, a few minutes on each side. You just flip to your liking until they're your desired doneness, at least 165. I always recommend using the instant read thermometer and once you get something to 165, I'm gonna pull it over so that I can actually melt some cheese over it. A couple of these are definitely done. The ones that aren't, I'm gonna move them to the middle.
Use whatever cheese you want. I love sharp cheese. Pepper Jack would also be an amazing choice. Or use no cheese at all if you're no fun. All right, this cheese is gonna melt quick, so I'm gonna raise this up. All right, for the ones that the cheese is insanely super melty, which is my favorite, I'm gonna pull those off. Insulated glove here, by the way, I'm not Superman. Look at that. <laughs> Gorgeous. I'm gonna finish these last couple up. I'm gonna lower this grate down, burn this cheese off, get my jalapenos over, and then we're gonna build some epic sandwiches. All right, the chicken thighs have cooled down. It's time to make this uh, so-called favorite, new favorite sandwich of mine. I've just got a toasted Martin's uh, potato bun here. Big fan. I'm going mayonnaise. I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Obviously, we could keep it Texan and rustic, and uh, we could make tacos out of this. But anytime I make something that's a little bit spicy, uh, I like the cheese and mayo to cool it. And naturally, we're going with Duke's, the only mayonnaise that you should ever use. And I'm not affiliated with Dukes, that's just how I feel. All right, oh, that's super good. Crispy little nugget. Here we go. You can make it more fancy if you want, but I'm going super duper simple. I'm gonna give this a, on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give it a 12. I'm not mad at that in the least bit. First off, chicken thigh, super freaking juicy hard to dry out, a little spicy, not too spicy. Um, how do I describe this? I would not feed this to my little kids. It'd probably be too spicy for my 10 year old, but you can see I don't love like hot, hot, and I didn't go straight for my water. Um, it's got like a great level of heat. If you wanna adjust it, you could, you could marinate it for less time. Um, you could also not do as much Cholula in the baste if you want. But I gotta tell you, the pairing with that, you know, great bread, the mayonnaise, the super duper melty cheddar cheese on top of it, I'm a huge fan. And I did the math on what I bought. 12 bucks for eight sandwiches total, super good deal. The recipe is always below in the description. Um, if you don't know, we release these videos every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central. The banner of meatchurch.com becomes that recipe. You can always find these on meatchurch.com as well as our spring collection all of our merch that we've got out please like and subscribe uh, your subscriptions are what allow us to continue to make these free weekly how-to cooking videos thanks for being here we'll see y'all next time